Hi folks, I'm Matt and welcome to part two of my Outside the Top 100 Vintage Board Games. Uh, so I'm going to do my last 15, 115 to 100. I, I'm going to do up to 100 because my vintage list changed right after I finished filming those videos and I forgot to do a little edit in there. Well, the edit had already gone through and I was like, oh well, forget it. So you're going to see a few changes, but I'll explain what those changes are and kind of maybe why they took place. And don't worry, I'm going to go a lot easier on my board games this time because the ones I'm going to be talking about aren't so bad. Take 115 for instance, Tailspin. In Tailspin you are controlling the little airplane I can't remember the name of the airplane now, the Sea Cow or something. Anyway, you're moving around the board, uh, basically just one big loop once and then moving up to the center and that's it. In that uh, game, which only takes like 10 minutes or less, uh, you're basically trying to get points because each person is moving it and rolling it and trying to get points. And of course, by the time it makes it, it docks into whatever its final destination is at the center of the board, whoever has the most points wins. I like the game because it's fun, it's short, it's unique that everyone's controlling the same pawn. I think that's kind of neat too. But uh, it is an extremely short game. I said 10 minutes, try 6 or 7. Uh, the game does not take long at all. And it's, it's, it's a decent game. It's not a bad game, it's not really a great game, but it's a decent game. But take 114 for instance, which is DuckTales the board game. DuckTales the board game, you're one of the, you know, Huey, Dewey, Louie, or Uncle Scrooge. You're at start and you're trying to get to finish. Finish is launch pad McQuack in a helicopter. Uh, but, and there are several paths to get there, but along the way are three movable villains. Uh, uh, the Magic Woman, oh man, I had her name when I was practicing this video and I can't remember her name now. Anyway, Gloom Gold, one of the Beagle Boys, and Magical Dispel. There, got it. Ha, ah, how's that for my memory? Uh, anyway, you're controlling one of those three villains every time you move. So you're, when you move, you're also blocking other people. This makes for an interesting game, and to be honest, out of all the Disney afternoon cartoon games they made, this one is the best, just like in real life. DuckTales the cartoon, the original version, is still better than Rescue Rangers, uh, Darkwing Duck, Tailspin, and Goof Troop. I never even watched that garbage. Number 113 is Jurassic Park. Ah, oh, the board game. Such beautiful, beautiful dinosaur pieces. And of course, you are one of nine players. You can play this up to nine players. Incredible. And you're going across the island just trying to get to the main center. I'm guessing there's a helicopter there. Uh, the reason why this will never make my top 100, even though it looks great, the board is huge and everything, and you can play with nine players, I, I, why? But the reason it doesn't make my top 100 is because, just like I said in my review, nothing bad happens to you if you land on a dinosaur. If a dinosaur lands on you, you just lose your turn or freeze, you have to keep moving until you escape it. No one dies, no, no consequences. So it's not that scary being on a dinosaur, where I think some of these dinosaurs should be eating the people. But that's what they saved for later renditions of it. In fact, my 112, which is Lost World. Uh, this is the second Jurassic Park board game they came out with, and I think they did a little, be uh, a slightly better job on this one. See, you're either the humans or the raptors, and as the humans, you're trying to move a bunch of humans across this city from uh, one spot to the next, and you're moving on these buildings, which are these pop-up little, cheap little cardboard, uh, or not even that, just kind of thick paper uh, cutouts that you kind of have to put together. They, it looks really nice. The board game does look re very nice. And, of course, the raptors look great. They're action figures, as are the uh, uh, the T-Rex. There's a T-Rex in it. And the T-Rex kind of acts as a timer because every time the person playing the raptors rolls, if he gets a T-Rex die or a uh, T-Rex emblem on one of the dies, then he will move the T-Rex one spot closer to that temple. And this forces the other player are playing the humans to move as many humans out of the temple as they can and not just focus on, focus on two humans at a time. Because uh, if you focus on two humans at a time, yeah, those humans will get very far in the game. Unfortunately, though, that T-Rex is going to eat the rest of your crew. So I do like that about it. The reason this game is flawed because the dinosaurs are way too powerful. In fact, the only time I ever won, my wife made a stupid mistake and, did, and didn't see one of my humans and passed right by him with one of her raptors 
Raptors, which would have won the game for her. So only by mistake did I ever win this game. And I don't think any sensible player could ever win this game either, playing as the humans. The, the Raptors are way, way, way too powerful. So in my game number 111, they came out with Jurassic Park 3. And this is the same thing. You're humans trying to make it through the park to the helipad or the place where the helipad is going to pick you up. And of course, same thing. You have pterodactyls. You have Spinosaurus now with a T-Rex, with raptors, you know, all the great pieces you would expect. But now the humans are too powerful. See, the humans, when they get hit, they have certain hit points, and it's way more hit points than they need. Uh, so I, I've never seen a game where the humans do not win. They will win every time. In fact, we've had to break some rules a little bit. We changed the rules up a little bit. We're going to take away a little bit more tokens from the humans to make them not as powerful, even though even if they get hit three times before they die, that's still kind of powerful. Uh, and then also one of the rules is you cannot have your dinosaurs go from one land to the next. The boards divide up, I think, into four different lands. And we got rid of that rule too, and we let all the dinosaurs follow the humans. Because you can, in like two turns, just shoot right through a level without that dinosaur being able to get to you in time. And they're like, well then what's the fun of this? I got to move the raptors twice and now we're, I don't get to move them again? No, nah, I don't like that. But one thing I do like about Jurassic Park 3 that the other two games do not have and why I think it's better than the other two games is they, the, the humans have these cards that can get dinosaurs to fight each other and one of them will kill the other one. Like you can get a T-Rex to fight the Spinosaurus. One of them is going to die and that's a win for the humans. I actually kind of like that idea. So there are out of the three Jurassic Park games, that's how I would rank them you know, on my list with Jurassic Park 3 being the best. My number 110 is another game of my wife's. It's called Saved by the Bell. If you saw my review, you probably chuckled a little bit in it. I chuckled too. My wife and I played it. It was fun. She loves Saved by the Bell. So, and she thought the whole thing that was made for girls and I had to play it was really fun. And I'll be honest, in the right crowd that loves Saved by the Bell, this game is worth your time. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, how many people you know still love Saved by the Bell or even remember it now? Uh, so that that's the only problem. But I'm sure if I got with the right crowd and we played enough, maybe it can make my top 100. But I don't think it ever will because this game will not get that many game plays. My number 109 is another game from the Misses that I actually do enjoy. It's called Barbie Dream Date. Yeah, don't laugh at me. Uh, Barbie Dream Date, you're basically Ken and Barbie going out on a date. You know, Ken's got to get all this stuff for Barbie at first, then he picks up Barbie, and then they go uh, on as many places as they can before the time's up. The time is a clock on the board, and you'll move it, you know, across the, the hour hand will move for it to count the rounds. And then by the end of the day, you find out who went to the most places or had the most points like who had the best date and you can you know there are little snapshot photos on the back of these cards and you say oh here's you know two plastic you know couples enjoying skiing or at the beach or something to be honest it's actually pretty good and very thematic i can see when you know my little girls get older us playing this game and it probably making my top 100 one day uh the missus all uh, loves it and you know i gotta admit it's not that bad of a game thematically why so barbie dream date Ah, surprisingly, not a bad game. My number 109. Number 108 is the Jetsons. Uh, in the Jetsons game, you're basically moving around the board, same old story, and you're trying to collect pieces of a character. What character that is depends on which one you draw first, and then you'll build on that. Now, if you get someone else's character, you'll just slip it back in the bottom of the stack. There are four stacks uh, distributed evenly around the player board, and whenever a rosy card pops up, uh, you have to reshuffle all the stacks, so it keeps it you know random. Uh, this is actually a pretty fun game, uh, pretty quick to play, but it drags so bad at the end that it could not make my top 100. Uh, and the reason it drags is uh, the lower amount of cards you get, the more common that rosy card's gonna be. And so, you know, the first few times, everyone's got about two or three pieces of their four-piece character, and then that's when the game takes forever to finish. Because <laughs> everyone's pulling a rosy, and then you gotta distribute the little, you know, six or five or four pieces that are left. You're like, oh, you know, I was, j I, I just found out where my piece is. I'm trying to make it there, and some idiot drew a rosy. Now we gotta go. Where is it now? You know, so that is very aggravating. If it wasn't for that one little thing, this game would be in my top 100 because it is a fun game. 
Number 107 has been in my collection for a few years now, but it's just never seemed to crack the top 100. It is called Quicksand. In Quicksand, you are these characters that have, I think, five removable pieces, and as they're moving, they're also sinking into the sand if they hit certain spaces. And of course, there's ways to pull you up out, out of the sand and whatnot, but the thing is, though, you can sink lower and lower and lower to only your hat is showing, which is a funny, it's a fun, fun game to play. My nephews and I play it every once in a while and we always laugh and always enjoy it but the reason it doesn't make my top 100 is because it's basically roll and move that's all it is it's just roll and move there's only one path kind of circles around to the camp and it's basically luck of the roll man it is kind of fun taking off the pieces because you're going to move slower at times if you do that or you know it is fun to get your character right out of the uh out of the muck when he's been up to his neck deep and sand i think that's funny too uh but this game probably won't ever make my top 100 even though it is an enjoyable game and does get played uh quite a few times within the year my number 106 was number 80 last time. It dropped out of my top 100 completely. Um, and, well, basically it's Carrier Strike. It's a two-player game. That's probably why it dropped out. Carrier Strike looks really good on the board. You got uh, airship carriers. You got your ships flying around. I'm not really crazy about the how you do a dogfight, but dropping your payload, your missile, and having it slowly attack the air, uh, aircraft carrier is really cool. You're trying to destroy the opponents, two of their aircraft carriers to win. And that's another thing, the aircraft carriers are very hard to move. You have to roll dice and they both have to match up for you to move this way. You don't even get to move the way you want to move, you gotta move the way the dice are rolled. And I don't like that either. Now, if you can move your air sh aircraft carriers, yeah, it'd be a different game, probably a longer game too. Uh, but the game does look really awesome. Maybe I need to try this one again. It didn't get played this year. It won't get played much, which is why it fell out of my top 100. At number 105 is one of the misses games that almost made my top 100. It's I Dream of Genie. I Dream of Genie, of course, you're Genie. You're going around this board looking for Major Nelson. There are these cards you flip over. Uh, some of them can help you. Sometimes you can switch places, places with another character. And if you find one of the, I think there's like three Major Nelson cards in in, on the board. If you find one of them, then you got to make a dead run for the uh, airship because you're trying to get him onto his little spaceship, his rocket launch in time. It's a very simple game. I got it from my wife because she's a big I Love, uh, no, I Dream of Genie fan. Whoops. I Dream of Genie fan. She likes I Love Lucy too, but she loves I Dream of Genie as well. And so we got the game, we played it, and the couple of times I played it, it's not that bad a game. It's really not. I do like how you have to be sneaky to see if you if you find a Major Nelson, you don't want anyone to know. Because remember, anyone can switch boards with you or sometimes steal cards, if I remember right. Uh, but I, there's something you, you have. When you find Major Nelson, you have to be quiet and slowly inch your way to the bottom of the board. Now, when you make it to the very bottom, people know what you have. But uh, along with that, you don't have to go in a zigzag fashion. You can go up and down these blocks just going into random uh, stores and just trying to find Major Nelson. Maybe you don't. A lot of times, I remember I found him first off, but I just stopped in a bunch of other stores on my way down going, man, I can't find him anywhere. And then, of course, I made a run for the uh, rocket ship. <laughs> uh, it's a fun little game. Not much to it, but it is fun, which is why it's on my list at 105. Number 104 was number 76 last year. It kind of dropped completely off my list. It's Battleship, the classic game of Battleship, two-player version. You sunk my Battleship. Loved this game as a kid. Loved it. Still have my copy uh, that I, uh, the copy that I had, not when I was a kid, but like the one I had when I was a kid, the 90s version, early 90s version. Um, I just don't play it. Uh, it's a two-player game, even though, I'll be honest, it has come out during uh, vintage board game nights, uh, but I just never played it. It was at, it was at the two-player table, and I just not, didn't get a chance to go over there, which is probably why it fell off my list. Number 103 was number 79 on my list last year. It's called Fat Chance. Uh, Fat Chance, you're just moving around the board, rolling dice and uh, getting, uh, getting food pellets. Uh, I, I told you the reason why this game fails for me is because the scale that came with it doesn't really measure those uh, the fat man like they're supposed to. In fact, those wood pellets are very light. Now, someone made an interesting comment. Can I use like lead weights or quarters or something or pennies to make them way heavier? 
Possibly, yeah, that's not a bad idea. I probably need to try that. I did get a big fat, you know, multicolored die that goes well with the board game. Uh, my little nephews actually wanted to play this game. They actually requested this game end of last year, and I was like, okay, let's play it. And it was okay, but the fact that you, they wanted to use the scale so bad because they thought the scale was really funny and really cool. But when I showed them the scale did not work, they were kind of like, oh, okay, well, let's just finish up this game then. And that's how you feel uh, when the scale doesn't really work. But maybe next time I'll try pennies and see if that works. My number 102 was number 77 the year before, if I remember right. It is Shake Bingo. Shake Bingo, you're just rolling the dice and you know trying to put your little tokens on the different numbers. I can't remember if I had this in my top 100 list. I don't think so, since we're getting close to the top 100 here. Uh, but anyway, the reason it drops off, because it's just really nostalgia, is just keeping this one alive. To be honest, the game isn't that good. I just remember uh, tons of memories at my grandmother's house. When it's raining, we couldn't go outside, and that was the only game she had. So we played it, and we had fun with it, or I thought we did. I played it recently with my wife this past year, and I thought, mm, it's not really that good. So that's why it's not on my top 100. Now here's the tricky thing. Uh, at my new number 100 is Key to the Kingdom. I'm skipping 101 on purpose. Well, 101 was Pizza Party, which I think, I'm think i pretty sure it was in my top 100 uh, last year. I think Shake Bingo was 100 and Pizza Party was number 99, if I'm correct. Uh, either way, though, uh, Key to the Kingdom moved to my number 100 spot just because we played it with some BGG uh, online rules. Some guy changed up the rules to make it a little bit better. It is a little bit better, but still very fiddly. And I did play Pizza Party, which was my 101. And I just recently played this, well, it was last month, uh, with my nephews. And I, my, my feelings have changed. Pizza Party is not that bad of a game. We had a great time. It's, it's aggravating when you pick something that's not your topping. But when you pick that switch, someone who went from losing can go to winning immediately. In fact, my little niece, who had zero idea of what she was doing, she just knew to draw one and look at me to see if she could put it on her pizza or not. Uh, she actually ended up winning the game, which is funny because she had no idea <laughs> what she was doing. Which probably should also say, well, Pizza Party, Matt, is not a good game for that reason. No, I think it's fun because anyone can win. It just showed me that. So it doesn't, you don't need to be talented. Little kids, especially, would absolutely love Pizza Party. So maybe I should put Pizza Party as 100, Key the Kingdom at 101. I don't know. This has just been my outside the top 100 vintage board games of all time. Well, not really, just in my collection. All right, folks, that's it for now. See you next time.